Hey, everybody. You're tuned in, so you already know where you're at, probably. Man Seeks Adventure. This is episode 91. That's right, 91 of these. And uh, we are still here, Dave and I. I'm Brad Fanshaw. That's Dave Merrick. Diamond Dave Merrick. Hey. And, uh, we are Dan, we are getting going in a good way. Dave, I got to tell you, though, before we uh, get into everything, I have been working out really hard again. I, w- I looked at myself uh, in our back on episode 89, and I said, Brad, you uh, have like some COVID fat going on there. <laughs> you know, I've been sitting around too much. So COVID-19? Got- yeah, so I got back into it, and... Um, and I've been, I've been really, I've been lifting regularly, and I have also, um, I, I'm a walker. I can't run because of my motocross days. My knees are too screwed up. And so I walk very vigorously through the canyon. And I've been doing about, averaging about six miles a day and, uh, and doing it every day, religiously. I get home from work, and, uh, and if it's dark, I've got a street. Uh, version. I'm a street walker. Yes, I admit it. Um, <laughs> Before I could say it. Because I'm not going to go up into the mountains behind my house because uh, there are lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. So, oh, and uh, bobcats. There's a union yes. of bobcats. Yeah, no, they're, they're coming down out of the hills, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Every time. Dummies. They Every time there's a fire, they all, like, yeah. Yeah. That's for the See it? Hey. Everyone, we want to thank you because you have been giving us uh, some great feedback and some great support by going to iTunes and giving us that five-star rating, a nice comment, as well as following us on iTunes. You don't know how much that helps. Do you know there can be some really shitty shows out there, but if they've got like 500 followers, they're going to be rated above us. So don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. I'll let that happen. And uh, the other thing is, is that uh, we do want to thank you because uh, our numbers have been really doing well. And uh, it's around the world. We're going global, Dave. We're going global. global. We'll be, when this pandemic's over, it'll be, hey, come see Brad and Dave in Dubai. Come see Brad and Dave in Tokyo. And, uh, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll be able to be like bands that can say, oh, yeah, we're big in Tokyo. We're, we're big in Japan. So, um but uh, are, no, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, we've got a great show. If you listen to our last episode, you know what direction we're going. We're going up. And uh, not just in the ratings, because we have been starting. I asked Dave when we closed out the last show, does he believe in aliens? And he said to me, and he said to me, I did. I just said, of course, because I've been accused of being from another planet. That's why. I agree. Well, maybe it's because but, you have a, a a shaved head and no eyebrows. That's kind of it. I have eyebrows that just are so gray white that you can't tell. Yeah, yeah. But I, it's kind of like I was thinking about this that it's a little bit pre-Halloween, and we don't know what Halloween's going to be like. Is there social distancing? What what our kids going to go out? Is everybody going to wear a mask? <laughs> so this is kind of a pre-Halloween alien show, I think. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be out of this world. I used that last show. I couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. <laughs> but, um, but very Earth seriously, when I you... used that last show, too, because we'd had the Earth. Earth. When you look at it from an entirely intellectual standpoint, I've got to believe that there's aliens. I've got to believe there's you know, life out there, whether they visited us, that's a whole nother thing. But when there is a hundred billion stars just in the Milky Way galaxy, Dave, I mean, what are the odds that there's going to be some other form of life out there and intelligent life? And, and then if we expand it from there, now this is the number that blows me away is that in our, um, in our part of the universe, in our universe, do you know how many stars they say there are? Billions, quadrillions. I know they say, that, that's Carl saying billions and billions. But no, billions. Um, 
they they estimate there is one billion trillion. Yeah. Yeah. I try to try to wrap that number around your head. It's you know? Infinity times infinity. If you yeah. think about it, if you think it just keeps going on and on and on. Right. And the um and I mean and there's nine planets in our solar system. I know you could say eight, but I no, still no, count it, I still it, count it Pluto as a planet, damn it. No, they said it was a planet again. They they reversed that. Now they've reversed it? Yeah, it's the planet again. I didn't know that. See? Yeah. So you it's learn nice. something every day on Man Seeks Adventure. Because for a while, the Earth was flat. Because of but that. There was a researcher. Her name's Lynn Rothschild. She's from NASA. Oh. From NASA. And um, you know what NASA stands for, by the way? National Air and Night Space Association. Space, uh, Administration? Administration. Good. Good for you. Because I've asked some people that. I don't know. So um, but uh, she points out that uh, how do we really search for something that we don't know what we're looking for? Yeah. If we've never seen it before, yeah. we don't even know what life really means. Yeah, does it move? How, yeah. how would you tell? Like, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, does it, and it's just like uh, the fact that we base everything in our science and our thought about the, well, right. it has to be carbon-based. Yeah. And how do we know that every life form has to be carbon-based, Dave? I it's, mean, I'm gonna say it doesn't. I, uh, you know, and define that. What is what is? And maybe it's not even a, a physical thing. It's right. Some kind of mental. Oh wait. Well, how about if we go back to no. <laughs> what we hear in popular cult culture now about? that um, there's this whole thing about, well, maybe we're living in a matrix and we don't really right. exist. Well, we're, we're on the top of a pin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, but, but I mean, how do we know that, that, you know, if we're physical, but maybe somebody else is in a matrix or maybe this other life form was created by another physical being and okay. they're mechanical. Or, they're playing video games right now. Yeah, we, we don't in. know. I mean, it's you can just go down that rabbit hole so deep. Well, I'll tell you what. The whole notion of uh, Earth 1, Earth 2, like, you know, in, in Marvel or, or in DC, you know, they always have an alternate. Like, yeah. You, you can go into alternate Earth, universe. Earth, Earth 25, whatever it is. So I'm thinking that the, if there's an Earth 2, Let's go there because I'll bet you the fucking bars are open. <laughs> In the alternate universe, I, the bars yeah. are open. And, the, and I'll say cheers to that with yeah. our oh, drink yeah. of the day. Drink of the day. Tell drink us the day. drink of the day there, Bradley. The drink of the it day cool. is, I'll tell Mine you right not now. not so stylish because I didn't have the twist. Tasty. So our drink of the day is called the abduction Ooh. and the abduction is a vodka based drink Close and i mixed down. it up with an ounce and a half of vodka but now here's the hard part i had to get up early this morning dave and uh, make some ginger syrup so i got some Close fresh this. ginger diced it all up because i just did ginger ale ginger that ale works. yeah that works too uh, ginger but beer, but ginger. i reduced it down made a syrup and put about three quarters of an ounce of that in here along with some mango orange and some uh, uh, carbonated water. Then uh, now I stir this with a lot of ice, strain it and pour it into the glass and then garnish it with some dried mango and some dried ginger. And let me tell you, this is one of those drinks. It's pretty good. That I don't know what it is. It tastes really good, but I bet you could drink that a little too fast and wake up <laughs> in another dimension and, and actually swear that somebody was probing planet? you. You're on another planet? Yeah, somebody right. could be probing you, you know, because it could get you going. So the abduction, as always, well, I can tell the you. video of making that cocktail on our YouTube channel and at our website, and then we will uh, have it on the list 
on our uh, website as well have the actual um, you know breakdown of it. Well, and I can tell you that you know we of course talk about things before we do our show to, as we should. And Brad said, "I'm making this for dinner. <laughs> this is really good." I know. I'm gonna drink it twice today. I guess so. I'm going in. He made he made pictures of it. Yeah. Hey, um, so Dave, have you ever had a UFO or an alien experience? Um, otherworldly, sure. I th think it was tequila, but uh, no, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I it, it's not. It, it's kind of you 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 go like this a little bit with ghosts. You know, do you feel do you feel ghosts or do you feel Alien, and I think the alien experiences, I've seen stuff, you know, like when you're traveling, like uh, that, how did that happen? Or, or, you know, how was that made? How, that's just, it's insane. Like Arches National Park or things like that, where you just think, you know, I, I get the erosion and things happen, but there are some things, you know, you watch Leonard Nimoy and you go, hey, I saw that on that TV about how they, they built the pyramids. How did they do this? So ingenuity, of course, but I, I think, you know, somewhere as a designer, I'd like to think that there's some type of, it's like you said, there has to be life somewhere else. This has to. It's, we're too well, arrogant to think there's no life. You're leaning towards that we have to have been visited because of some of the things yeah. that yeah, exist. That and there's a whole school of thought. Right. There's a whole study of that we were well advanced, you know, than what we are now. And yeah. something brought everything crashing down and we've had to actually start over. Yeah. And, you know, I just watched a documentary the other evening and you brought up the pyramids. And to me, that's what I've heard my entire life about yeah. how they built the pyramids. Nobody I knows. They, these the 80 tons. Yeah. All that. 80 ton blocks of rock. How did they move those? And then they talk about down in South America, the, um, you know, how did the Incas yeah. get these fitments that were so tight you can't put a toothpick between them, you know, and this precision craftsmanship. But precision this documentary before. brought up something I'd never known about. There's a palace that looks like it's Romanesque, and it's in the Middle East. And I'm sorry, I can't tell you the name of it right now. Be Excuse me. I didn't have my notes up to snuff, Dave. But Thank you much. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I was abducted last night. And uh, no. Um, and for anyone who look this up, it is amazing. Because this place has, it's on top of a mountain. It looks like a Roman, you know, cathedral giant columns and like that but the blocks they made it out of are 300 tons and they had to move them from a stone quarry a half mile away down a mountain and they're saying today we couldn't move a 300 town a uh, 300 yeah. ton I mean, you could but it's it's quite you'd have to have 100 people try and figure out how they're going to do it and what they're going to do and, and um so it's it's one of those things that, getting back to what you said, well, it's kind of there had know, to be something. Well, the the yeah, I you know Masada is that Masada is the Israel, and they you know, but they said that Roman troops had done that when they were there. It's like the troops were busy. Right? <laughs> yeah, but How'd they built that thing up there. Like, well, and, and I, I like chicken Masada a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean. The um, the thing but is, that's what makes you and I think it because how did they do that? Come on, uh, you and I would both appreciate the engineering if they said, you know, we had, you know, all these you know ropes and pulleys and and levers and stuff to do it. But you never see that part in the the shows. They always say we don't. They just kind of use slave labor or something like that. Nah, well, there's been universities that have tried to replicate it. Yeah. And, you know, they can't do it. Or they can, but they can move it five yeah, feet. Modern equipment, yeah. Right. And then there was uh, the fact that these were perfectly cut. Yeah, that's it's Almost the like they're laser cut. And then there was the fact that, that they say, okay, 
So they put logs down and moved it uphill a half mile. They said, the only problem is there's no road. There's, there's nothing in the earth that shows that a thousand of these blocks would have left a permanent, you know. Then let's talk about, let's talk about in South America, some of these, you know, giant petroglyphs of the, uh, the animals and the sun and the arrows that you yeah. can only define by the air. Yeah, crop, crop, burning. you know, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, it's cool. But you have to, you know, you know, it boggles the mind and makes you think that there has to be something out there and there has to be something right there. And, uh, you know, it's, it, you can go down this rabbit hole in so many ways, but, when you try and define life, um, do you know they actually have a criteria for what defines life? Because we talked about it earlier. We talked about how, right. how um, what really does define life. But they yeah, say, the number form. one is yeah. it must draw energy sources in its right. environment. Yeah. From the eventual sun. We that from keep it from becoming uniform and unchanging. Then... It grows exponentially, you know, so it replicates. It's got to, it's got to keep growing. Um, it can regulate itself and it can stay sa stable in a changing environment. So yeah. basically there's something about its DNA that's going to let it, you know, yeah. or adapt. Stay. Yeah. And then finally for it to be life, which I don't know about this. I know they say it, but, it learns and remembers information from its environment, kind of like Darwinian evolution. Yeah. However, don't we already know about life forms on our planet that we found at the bottom of the ocean or we found in like these, you know, weird little pools of yeah. acid and like that, that, that survived just fine. But I don't think we're seeing them remembering any information, you know. But I guess primordial thinking is that they you you survive because you adapt and, and move all all the first three kind of mean that there is some some way to survive as Darwinism or something. It just seems logical to us. But it probably isn't true. You could probably just hang out like a jellyfish and just float around. It seems like Never evolve. I, I don't know. Well, I know some people like that. <laughs> the thing about aliens is that we've got to separate them by what we see in film and yeah. what we've always had in popular culture. What we want with them what, to be. Yeah. With what science yeah. says, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I've never had an experience. I, I wish I could say I've you know oh I've seen something in the sky or I've well, on my planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I love looking at stars. I love looking at the night yeah, sky cool. and thinking about it and thinking about. But when you look at that, you know there's got to be something up there. Yeah. And yeah. Um, now, one of the things that really got me thinking about this a lot was I used to spend a lot of time driving back and forth between California and Phoenix because I used to have a house over there. Uh, and I would go back on the weekends, come over here during the week. And there was a show called, well, it still exists. I shouldn't say there was, uh, Coast to Coast AM. Have you ever listened to it, Dave? I've heard, listened to it, but I don't religiously listen. Okay. I know. Don't I know. used to, Art Bell was the original founder of it. Oh. And he founded it in 1978 as a political show. And it was called coast am uh -huh. but then it kind of morphed and, and in uh 1988 he, he renamed it him, so he, he what's evolved. that darwin got to him so he evolved. yeah no um in 1988 coast to coast was the new name and it really went towards paranormal aliens uh -huh. conspiracy theories and i used to listen to it driving on friday nights and on Sunday From night, Roswell. back and forth. And 
he originally um, did it from the Plaza Hotel in downtown Las Vegas. And I would be driving across the desert to be black as hell. And this is in the days before cell phone because it's yeah. 1988. And, and he would talk about aliens and he would talk about conspiracy and conspiracy, right. you know, and that they're covering things up. But he, he was so compelling and he would do it in such a way that you would just go, wow. Now, the other thing is, is the show came on at 1 a.m. and ended at 5 a.m. That was East Coast. So it came on about 10 o'clock out here and 10 or 11 o'clock. And I remember driving, you know, I'd leave and I'd be halfway across the desert and I'd go, oh, finally, art's coming on. And then, you know, <laughs> um, because we didn't have MP3s, didn't have anything to listen well, you could to. Leave at 10 and then start at the beginning. Yeah. And, um, and there were times I literally would get to Phoenix sit in my car for 30 or 40 minutes because I wanted to hear the rest of the show, you know? And oh, yeah. uh, now get this pre internet. He had a weekly listener base of 10 million people. Crazy. See, that's and, crazy. And now today uh, there's a new host, a guy named George Norrie. I don't like him as much. I don't, Yeah, you know, he goes more off into the, you know, he'll have musicians on, and he'll have guys on talking about supplements and, you know, you know what, if I want health supplements, I'll listen yeah. to a health supplement show. And okay. if I want to listen to, you know, famous musicians and like that. Yeah. And he's a real uh, fanboy when he does it. Cause he's yeah. like, you know, Oh man, I've always liked you. And you know, that's not, I want to hear conspiracy right. series. I want to hear about the guy who, Worked at Area 51 and what happened out there yeah. and shit like that, you know? Area 54. I like Area 54. <laughs> it was, it was but, a cool, cool but, dance play. What I always liked about that was the fact that he would take you down a rabbit hole. He would take you and leave you questioning and looking in the sky and stuff like that. And, and you know, whether it was you know, was talking about Project Blue Book. And then every once in a while, he'd have some crazy nut freak on there that you'd just Wait, be going, oh, yeah, Betty, sure you did, you know? <laughs> That's what you like when you do that. But he, he actually looked like an alien. He was kind of a weird-looking dude. Like, later. He was oh, and he had some weird backstories. You're talking about Art Bell? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, he had some weird backstories about, like, his kid being – kidnapped once all kinds of weird shit but yeah, those, what, those what do you think people. what do you think kind of gets you triggered dave what gets you kind of like uh y you know i mean what, um, what's what take, theory what take you alien. aliens just down you know like what's the rabbit hole you would just go down if there was something there is it that if somebody said area 51 we have alien craft or is it you would rather hear more about like uh Reynoldsham Forest and where where these no, no, I'm, I'm totally the craft and, and gear and hardware and, and alien technology because that's what I'm into I'm into future tech and things like that and we were talking about cutting the, the stones perfectly and stuff like that I want to you know I want what what's the spacecraft what's is the stealth bomber based on their technology all that stuff you know it's probably you know it's not but it could be and i love that stuff so i area 51 i'd like to see the the body i want to see all the evidence of that you know they, they took it you know you do the will smith movie but literally you're in there and you go holy crap like all this stuff i, I didn't know but to me it'd be what's her spacecraft look like in the technology you know, it's you, you watch the Star Wars quintrilogy, quadruple, whatever. You, you know, Star trilogy. Wars is not it, a documentary, right? It, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> but you think, like, lately, I looked at the sun. I said, Jesus Christ, I'm living on Tatooine because the sun's pink. <laughs> but, whoa, oh, or is there another one? It, yeah. But I, that would be me. I'd go down the rabbit hole of the technology and, and 
Area 51 to me, it's kind of like, who says there's not? You know, they sent it to weather balloon and it was nuclear testing and the nuclear testing could have blown something up and, and out of it came some stuff that had been growing from aliens in the first place. I, who knows? But okay, I, you, I you hit on two things there. And one of them was, you said, you know, do we have a ship? Is it reverse engineered? And then you, um, so that takes us to Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. And the, probably the most famous of all, which is the flying the farmer saw yeah. an alien yeah. ship crash. He said it was a flying saucer. And the, the Air Force comes out from a nearby base and they say, oh my God, this is, this is a flying saucer. And a local newspaper comes out, the Roswell Daily Record, and they get a quote from a high-ranking Air Force Oops. official who Imagine said, today. <laughs> we have a, an unidentified flying object, an unidentified flying object, it's a flying saucer, and we have aliens that don't look like us, that we are, that we, yeah, that, you know, bodies. that are dead. Yeah, yeah. alien bodies. Yeah. So they put it on the headline the next day, yeah. and then yeah. they're visited by some higher up brass that is like, this is bullshit. You didn't, uh, no, 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 we've got a quote, you know, and, yeah. and, and then all of a sudden it becomes a, um, weather, a weather, a weather. Balloon. yeah, but I guess they could, you know, they said it was related to the nuclear testing. So it could have been something to monitor that, but uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like the guy, he said, uh, you know, you would want it to be some weird unobtainium metal or something. He said it was like 24 feet or something like that. So I guess, you know, it, it would be tough to fit a bunch of people in it, but uh, you know, who said the aliens had to be very tall? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing. Who knows? I mean, or, throughout our years and our generations on earth, um, the average person has become larger. So, yeah, you know, absolutely. maybe it's a, it's a, it's a bell curve, you know, it's, yeah. right. Yeah. Or do they even look like, you know, they look like ET or something. Cause he said bodies, there were bodies, alien bodies. I think, well, do they look like what they look like, you know, longer arms. Cause they always have the longer head and the longer arm. Let's, they, I, you know what? I want to are... show you an alien that I've captured and I'm being serious. Okay. Um, I always like the evolution of us. This, like they, they came here, we became, and then they evolved somewhere else and looked like us, only smarter. But no, I, I, I'm, very, I'm very serious. I'm going to show something that I acquired over the years and for the first time I've ever shown it to anyone. Um, Drum but, roll, please. <laughs> but it, it, it has a higher intelligence than either of us. Oh. It has more memory capability than either of us <laughs> and and it can definitely sing better than us and oh, there it is. so to certain people can you imagine if you took that back 25 years that would yeah. be alien Good. to them you'd be what the hell is that yeah, yeah. you'd be like going back in time it, it would be like you know what the hell how do you how do you do that you know how do you how do you you know you but, witch well, you know i mean is time travel true? So somebody went back and knew how to cut the stones for the pyramid, get it up there, and then came back in time. And then it evolves into actual reality. Who knows? What do you I think th about time travel? I think it's got to be able to do it. What was the time, not time stop, but the one where they went back to the French forest during the 1500s or something? A movie, you mean? Yeah, what was that called? And I don't, he, I don't know. And, but going back to Art Bell again. Gerard Butler, he was the king. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, but going back to Art Bell show again, are, are you familiar with John Teeter, the story of John yeah. Teeter, yeah. time traveler? Time I mean, time. excuse me, 2000, 2001, this guy calls into the Art Bell show and he says, hey, I'm a time traveler and uh, I'm here to, uh, you know, to on a mission. I'm, I'm in the military and I'm trying to remember 
what year he said he was from. Let me see if I can find it here real quick. Um, I'm a time traveler and I'm from 1850. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't have access to it right at the moment. But he, um, he told them that he was here and he was, uh, his mission was to get a, um, an IBM 5100 computer. Oh, no way. Which. He was from 2037. I, I looked it up. 2037? Okay. 2037. And at the time, people were like, what the hell? That's an old computer. Why would anybody want that? <laughs> and, and, and he explained that it, it's the our... only computer. What's that? Did Art Bell say Brad has one? Yeah, exactly. Brad, go see Brad. He's got all kinds of stuff. Um, but there was literally only like a half dozen computer scientists that worked at IBM that went, how the hell did this guy know this? Because it was the only computer that you could change certain code with because they'd never gone back and updated it. And he was saying that they needed it to do this in the future, you know? And um, Crazy. See? then he showed plans for his time machine and explained how it worked. And then it, it was, it was so complex and it boggled your mind because then an attorney got involved and because his family, because <laughs> he said that his family was alive and him as a kid was alive living here in America. And, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, that throws out the whole grandfather paradox, you know, because if he could be here and, his, than his dad. you know, it's, but, um, and, yeah, that's the, the whole space. Uh, what's the X minus one on old time radio. They always did the, the conundrum of, you know, you're, you're back in time. I went back to try and, Stop Lincoln from being killed. They always do those. But yeah, exactly. You turn that year John Wilkes Booth, and you can't, you can't help it. It's like, oh shit, I love that stuff. Well, yeah, it's because it it plays with your mind. And with yeah. John Teeter, the thing about it, which is so strange, is he told them, "All right, I'm done here. I'm going back to the future," and he disappeared. They they've never found another thing about there him. You go. See and. His footprint's gone, everything. And it's like, okay, wait a minute, you know? And uh, that I love that stuff. I love it because timeline. of the fact Timeline that, was great. What's that? that? Was timeline. They have the machine that they could go back, and the guy came back, and he, when he pushed his thing, a grenade went instead, and it blew up this side. So they had to try and rebuild to get him back. Just, Go, if you talk about going down a rabbit hole, timeline. It was it was pretty cool. Well, it's Paul Walker's in it. If you want to go, I mean, really twist your mind up, start reading some of the, um, you know, the the physicist papers, and that they that I've done, and the guys that are really trying to figure out time travel, if it's possible, right. yeah. and I said they one one will say. Well, going forward is possible, but not backward, or backwards possible, but not forward. Yeah. And then they start talking about, well, first of all, anything a physicist tells me, I'm not going to understand anyway. Right. But, and they already say hey, we're doing it all the time. They're, I, honestly, the things travel in time. Well, I'm sure I just traveled in time. It was like three seconds, but I just. Yeah, well, well no, we do. <laughs> and when we get on a plane, we're actually doing time travel. Yeah. Because you know, a plane, you know, can fly faster and yeah, uh, I mean, I I skip a day and then I I fly back and and gain time back. So it's, yeah. Well, and the closest we know now to time travel, I guess, is that if we sent men to Mars in our current configuration, right. light years away. Well, yeah, but what is it if they go to Mars and they're gone? nine months and they come back it's actually been he years here right yeah so so, the, yeah. It's so that that has to be a, a sense of time travel yeah. it, you know some yeah. sort of time travel but the you were gone um, by a minute. what are you talking about 
I mean, do you think, Dave, do you think the government would even tell us if they knew how to time travel? Do you think they'd no. tell us if they had alien technology? No. No, hell no. Right. I mean, I mean they, they, they would hoard that, like, if, no, if we, only we had it, they would, there'd be no way that they would do you, let that. Do you think if we had an alien, a, a real live living alien, or even a body, that Trump would make a licensing deal to put it on display at the Trump Towers well, in New York? That might be true. <laughs> Show it at Mar a Lago. Hey, I got an alien. Come I'm by and see. He, he could go golfing and get a little, you know, have a few beers and go, I got a alien. You just want to see it? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> well, what? Uh, I would, if I was president, I'd probably go, dude. Come, come over to my house. What's the you. famous story that Richard Nixon took Jackie Gleason out yeah, to yeah. see Area 51, Area 51. you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, hey, check this out, man. You know, yeah, we can yeah, crap. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of things that you just kind of go, wait a minute, you know? It's, well, it's um, the thing in the, the book that they all have. They have all the secrets in it. The, the Nicholas oh, uh, Hangar, Hangar 10 or something like Hangar, that? Yeah. Well, and then... Uh, they, they, or are you talking like, about the Vatican? The, the Vatican too. That I the, speaking of the Vatican, I'd love to go in oh, there, man. dude. That's got to be some cool shit in there, man. That'd be nuts. Well, you I know, tried to, and they, they, they taught me. The yeah, not, yeah. You got you got to go through years of uh, schooling to go there, and then you get out. Be um, a you know, recently and. Uh, Within the last 30 days, there was a, uh, a very high-ranking flight commander out of San Diego that, um, you know, they released finally his uh, footage where they sent him out, and they call it a, I remember that. the yeah. Tic Tac. Yeah, and, that was nuts. Yeah. And, I mean, that's what he's saying. We did not oh, – he goes, I – It was, you know, it was not uh, – yeah. Because that's not something we have. And he goes, and it wouldn't respond. And it, yeah, no, that thing was cool. Man. And he That's said like, it would let him get to a certain, and as soon as he locked onto it, it yeah, would go, like, it and it would go at right angles. And he goes, we can't do yeah. that. You know, he goes, that's just uh, amazing. And there's, there's a lot of that that happens. And um, it's, uh, it, it does boggle I mean, the mind. It does make you that think. That one, when you think about, you know, the legitimacy of it, those are the kind of ones where you go, dude, they could just be doing a scouting mission. What, what is that? that? How, you know, and maybe he doesn't know. Maybe we do have that technology somewhere and, and they were just testing it. But, dude, who knows? I mean, that's crazy stuff. But I love that one because he was, you know, pretty reputable. And just going, we all saw it. And we were all like, what the hell is that? Yeah, that's cool. do, you, do you think it's popular culture? Or do you think that we're being prepped for <laughs> something? Because we're seeing it more on the news. We're seeing our government say there are unidentified flying objects that we can't tell you what they are. And they're coming out officially. And, and we're also seeing TV shows like Ancient Aliens and like Project Blue. Well, also, you, you brought up, you know, the Internet age that people were finding out stuff right and left that they never would have before. And now you almost have to go, yeah, well, we're probably going to have to let them know because <laughs> they're going to yeah. find out. And it's going to be viral and literally viral. We're going to have and, to let them know the reason Trump has orange hair is because he's <laughs> an alien. <laughs> alien. <laughs> so. No, that's not a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. But it's, it's quite strange and the um you know the thing is is that we we see things constantly that just don't jive both yeah. in the past the right. present and looking into the future and you just have to say you know what i need to know more about this i mean i there are people that just sit around but i think we 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 want to investigate we want to know more <laughs> we want to we want to so if you're out there Informed. listening, you're an alien, call us. Yeah, we'll, you're we'll an alien, call us. Show, you know we'll what do. I would like to do is 
is get one of these guys uh, on the show, bring them in for a, a great discussion about this. Yeah. Somebody who actually yeah, says yeah. that they that they've been there because you know you you brought up conspiracy theories. I love conspiracy. I'm not a big conspiracy theorist. Like, okay, I don't yeah. believe half the stuff, but I love but to listen to what people come well, up with. And, yeah, and a lot of time it's clever that they would think that you're like, <laughs> how would you come up with that? But that's yeah, I, I like to do. Here's I, I the don't. single scariest thing, though, Dave. I told you I've been listening to the Art Bell show and Coast to Coast uh -huh. since the early, early years. Yeah. And You're some of the right. crazy shit that he's had people come on and say, oh, God, yeah. it's going to be this. And, and you're like, oh, my God, this dude is a wacko. And I've said it to my wife numerous times. You know what's scary is about, I'd say, two-thirds of the stuff came true, but it took – a decade later, you know? Right. And so now I go, now I listen with a whole different kind of Well, that's true. Set okay. of mentality, you know? Oh, good. Like, yeah, well, that's Rasputin or any of those. Like, they, they predict something and it comes through. That, you know, I, I love the line in Shooter. I think it was Shooter, the TV show, maybe. Or maybe it's the movie. Anyway, Shooter, you know, Mark Wahlberg. And literally he does the... He's talking to that guy, and the guy goes, there was a, a, a second shooter at Kennedy, and he goes, uh, he goes, uh, I know for a fact there's a shooter. He goes, how do you know? He goes, because I've got the shovel where we buried the bodies. <laughs> you think, oh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> so those are the kind of ones that I like. I got the shovel still. Yeah. I buried <laughs> it's, it's, um, it, it really is weird. I mean, what? what the world is so much larger yeah. than any individual and what we know. And, you know, when you look at the things that have come true, like, you know, um, some of the things that they did in the sixties, like, you know, testing LSD on people that were yeah. unknowing and right. testing chemicals and things that, that the CIA wanted to do that have come out now, you know, like, you know, well, what if we kill all these people on this airliner and then blame it on, you know, and that, oh, they'd never do that. Oh, no, here's the documents that we really want. Yeah, you know? Well, and you think about that, of course they would. You know, that's, that's, we need to get, every movie you see, it's like, you know, the guys, Alan Alda's trying to overthrow the president because Wesley Snipes is like, <laughs> like investigating the murder. You go, he literally wanted to start a world war so that they could get more conservative voting and you know it's just it's it's human nature isn't it I, or, I or that uh who's that other actor um dick cheney dick cheney yeah. <laughs> speaking of aliens <laughs> <laughs> but i mean the uh you know some of the leaps we've taken in technology are you yeah. know i mean yeah. you just go wait 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 a minute wait a minute we we didn't even we, we were sending letters and then we got a fax machine i remember standing yeah. at the first fax machine going wow how does yeah, no, do cool. that and it smelled good you know even the first year i said yeah. smelled good. i mean but i mean boom yeah. and then it took this ginormous oh, leap to where i when just filmed i just filmed a video here sent yeah, it to you I before mean, the yeah, show yeah. I mean, right. that is witchcraft. Well, they said, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll use nanotechnology. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? That was that movie with Gene Simmons where they had the little nanobots and the spiders. And now that's reality. You're like, what the hell, man? Come on. It, it, but yeah, it is. It's like, wow. And, and now the government it. wants to take and shoot everyone full of nanotechnology so they can track you in like that. Yeah. And they call it a COVID virus. Well, yeah. COVID they, virus. Yeah, it was. COVID. Yeah, they, yeah, it's like, well, then you can do contact tracing because you've got, they, they can track you with your phone anyway. It's well, awful. that's why I have a burner phone, Dave. That Good man. Oh, did I, I saw that? you. Shit. No, you were trying, last episode, you were trying to burn shit. So I figured you had to burn. <laughs> Slow burn last episode. Slow burn, that's it. But hey, so I recommend I, everybody. I'd say there's life out there somewhere. You go sure. down. Start looking at some of this because alien uh, 
alien life forms have got to be true. Whether they visit us or not, I think go, there's a lot of real. Go uh, deep in the ocean and look at some of those things and go, what the hell is that thing? Where did that come from? It, you know, honestly, you're like, whoa. Yeah. There's, when you look at structures, when you look at building, when you look at, well, uh, I mean, how about in the desert where they find um, remnants of a nuclear blast because it's just all glass yeah. in the Middle East? And they go, there's never been a nuclear explosion. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't set off. We know of. Yeah. So yeah. there's. Remnants. Let's, let's, yeah. let's take another, um, another uh, interesting question is if a technology came here from another world, would they, I mean, how would we Charger. care? What if, what if they wanted to take us over? If they're that far advanced, sorry, I had to pick my pen up. If they're that far advanced, how would we even stop them? Yeah, it'd be like one of these movies, like Do Independence it? Day. We'd be like, you know, going, man, we're screwed. Yeah, we bring a, we brought a pistol to a knife fight. <laughs> we yeah. a knife. Well, We've, we've laid a lot of stuff out there for you to think about as a listener. And um, we're going to try and get some guests coming up here because we think this is a really interesting topic. And, uh, you yeah, know, that'd be great. rather than us ramble, we're going to try and get some experts in here. And we're going we're gonna to pepper them with questions. But in the well, meantime, yeah, yeah, what's that? Let's, let's get a both sides going. Oh, yeah, definitely. And in the meantime, what um, we want to recommend is probably one of the best places, if you want to look at the night sky, if you want to look for aliens, or if you just want to be in an alien land that is uh, right here in the United States. Oh, yeah. Where was the highest temperature ever recorded on Earth? Just Death recently, Valley. Okay? Death Valley. Death Valley. It's named that for a reason. That's right. And um, Death Valley is one of my favorite places. I, I love that. It is the only place. Now, Dave, you've traveled there. Yeah, you um, and what I, I love. I did, it, I did it with the wagon train because I traveled <laughs> the, back in time. The Borax wagon train? Death Valley days. I did it. God, remember that show? Well, yeah, and you yeah. think about it, that was uh, hosted by Ronald Reagan, and, you know, he was president, and he knew about all the aliens. <laughs> yeah. There you but, go. But, no, what I was saying is that it's such a that, – that place has so many juxtapositions because yeah. there's that crater, and it is one of the few craters I've ever visited <clears throat> where you stand at – the edge of the crater, yeah. it's like a quarter mile deep, but you turn around and as far as you can see, yeah. well, no, but you see the spread blast pattern. Oh, yeah. It, boulders. It, 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 yeah. It's as if somebody was yeah. setting up a, a, like a set designer came out and they yeah. set boulders out like where Meteor you would think they would, they're just yeah. spread out over the valley. <laughs> and hit that like, yeah, yeah you good. can just see exactly where it happened. Then... You go to another place, and it's sand dunes like the Saharan Desert. Then there's another one where you can drive up the mountain, and it's the yeah, highest the point. Yeah. And you can right. go from the lowest point in, in America to one of the highest points in America. Then there are right. castles that were built out there. There's mines that are out there, and they're so remote that all the equipment's I, still there. Yeah, I like the mines. The mines oh, are I there. do, too. Yeah. And... Just, but let's talk about our recommendation of where to stay when you're there. Where would you stay? Well, there's only two fucking places, Dave. So I we don't have much of a stay. I guess it has the Winnebago <laughs> that goes a foot a day or something. Yeah. So can that out. Anyway, I wouldn't stay. But um, I'm going to go there this year. I've decided. I haven't the been ranch. there in a while. The point of the and, ranch. Uh, well, there's the ranch and then there's the Oasis. And uh, the Oasis is a five-star resort they just did a, a hundred million dollar renovation on it 
Now it was originally built in the 1920s. So it is incredible. It's the architecture, the bar there, everything. Now I will tell you, I booked a room there once. Okay. Uh, I was going to go out. Uh, Charlotte and I were going to go out. I was looking so forward to it. And uh, we left town on a Friday night. We came pulling out and folks, the, uh, Death Valley, if you've never been there, is one of the darkest places I've ever been in my life. You hear you can't see, you heard the expression, you can't see your hand in front of your face. We didn't have a full moon that night. There was no moon. You literally could not see the hand in front of your face. I pulled up in my car, pulled to the side of the road because I was going, I've been going down this two-lane road, seems like forever. I've got to have gotten to my turnoff by now. <laughs> Again, pre-internet, pre-mapping, you know, anything. So no GPS. Yeah. So I've got my yeah, I've got my AAA map and I've, you know, and I'm trying to map it out. And I'm sitting there at the side of the road, and all of a sudden, headlights go on. And they're right in front of me like backed into a driveway and i i like just about crap my pants man i was like holy crap it's an alien it's a spaceship it's, but no it was a park ranger and he, goes, he was sitting there pulled off the side of the road with his lights off and i pulled up and just sat there and all of a sudden he goes well i saw you sitting here so i turned on my lights and, and then he came walking over something i can help you and i'm like holy shit man and, uh, but he was not a car length away and I didn't even see him sitting there. And, um, so he says, I go, yeah, I'm looking for the, uh, it, back then it was called the Furnace Creek Inn. Now they call it the place. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I said, yeah, I uh, booked a room at the Furnace Creek Inn and, uh, do you know where the turnoff is? He goes, well, that's what I'm pulled into is the turnoff for the Furnace Creek. He goes, but they're not open. He goes, they, they don't open until next weekend. And I go, he goes, they're, he goes, they don't open until October 1st. And I'm like. Did he say, you, you got a pretty mouth? Yeah, exactly. You know? And I'm like, oh, well, no, but this tentacle came out, went up my nose. And the next thing I knew, I'd lost about eight hours of time, Dave. Yeah. Uh, but um, no, he, um, he goes, he goes, Go down about four miles, and on the left is the ranch. It's right behind the gas station. And yeah. so I get to the ranch and check in. They go, oh, yeah, yeah, they, 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 somebody must realize that you'd booked a week early, so they just moved your reservation to here. <laughs> and it was. They walked down the hill and said, hey. I know. It's like, it's like <laughs> we went from the five-star Furnace Creek Inn to the two-star <laughs> ranch, which <laughs> You know, it was also built in the 20s, but it was a dude ranch. The, and, yeah, it was a dude ranch. But yeah, the ranch is yeah. cool, though. And, but it was cool. We had fun. But the funny thing was, the girl who checked us in at the front desk and the guy who took our bags to the room, the next day, he was the chef at the restaurant, and uh, she yeah. was the one working the front counter at the restaurant, you know, because they only have so many employees. And either way, they're both awesome places. Just... Yeah totally polar different but the but oasis with the oasis. new renovation you should stay at the oasis because then at midnight at the oasis yes yeah. midnight at the oasis you could send your camels to bed That's and right. um but uh with this hundred million dollar renovation they now have bungalows and uh, i'm telling you i've got to go there this year it just looks so inviting and see where all the money went and what's that you gotta see where all the money went yes and uh, but no look it up online at the oasis yeah, cool. oasis death valley.com and you'll see it shows the ranch and you can look at both of them but it just looks spectacular i could just imagine let's sitting in let's go we, we open? Come, we'll the bar open, open. It opens October 1st, Dave. Is we don't want to get there before then. I know the bar. <laughs> they have a wonderful bar. If yeah, you, I know. It's cool. When it's you look up, it's, and it looks out over the valley and just awesome. Just awesome.
So that's where we recommend because that is one of the places that is alien right here on earth. Yeah. There's so much to do if you're into that kind of stuff. And you can go to Scotty's Castle. You can go to the mines. You can hike. You can see the boulders that move. And um, you can uh, see the borax mines. And then you can just sit out at the Oasis. You can just sit out on the patio with a cocktail and, uh, you know. just Well, that was the mines. They thought they were looking for gold and they found borax. The Mayans did? Yeah. (laughs) But literally, they they made fortunes on, you know, the cleanser. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit. Hey, cool. It's uh, it's a neat place. And it's a little bit... You know, just stuck in time, and there's some great stories out there. Do your research before you go, because you'll have a lot. You'll have a lot better visit if you kind of plan it all out. Go the week after they open. That's my recommendation. So, all right, everybody, we're going to call it quits. Uh, Dave and I have a spaceship to catch, and uh, you don't you (laughs) beam me up, Scotty. So, uh, hey, don't forget. Go to our website. You can find everything. Quit that. Quit that. And, um, and be sure to watch our uh, feed on our YouTube channel. There's yeah, also a bunch. Right. I'm telling you, man, if you go to our YouTube channel, there's every promo that we've ever done. And we get some great, we used to do these one-minute promos when Brad had time to edit them. And Dave, have you gone back and listened to those at all? I haven't. And I remember having so much fun doing them where we're just like, I did them the other I did so them I listened to some of them and they were where I used to take a show and I would take little excerpts out of every show and and do them out of context yeah and no, they're awesome they were fun and, well, and uh, you know every one of uh Heather's uh drink mix uh for those guys that are fans of Heather you can go on there and see her doing um all of her uh, drink mixes that she used to do for the show and uh, go check it out and all of our current stuff. So it's all right there you on YouTube. Check her out in Texas on her Instagram. Pardon me? Check her out in Texas on her Instagram. Yeah, she's still in Texas. She's moving around. Yeah. She but uh, yeah, check her out and check me out. Bradley underscore Fanshawe. Check me out. And uh, <laughs> David W. Merrick. Okay. Both on Instagram. Okay. But be sure to follow us on Man Seeks there you Adventure. Go. And we'll be Absolutely. back. We'll be back. We're going we're, we're gonna to record 14 shows today. So if you <laughs> see us looking a little tired at the end of... We're going to go back in time. We're going to go back in time and do some over. That's what we do. So, <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks. We'll see you next time on Man Seeks Adventure. Brought to you in part by Borax. And definitely Day. Yes. <laughs> cool. Yeah.